not telling me. Oh no, I hope we get him. All right, back on Up and Adams, trying to get to Devin Hester. He's in a car. We're trying to see if we can get him uh, on because I would freak out if I ever got to talk to him. But, I mean, year number two passed up for the Hall of Fame. It makes no sense. The Hall of Fame, respectfully, with love, what are we doing? 20 career total touchdowns, most all time. I knew in 2006, after that first touchdown against, I think it was the Packers, if I remember correctly, it was like an 84-yarder. He should have been... No, leave this up there. I need to read through that. Can we put that up there again? He should have been in the Hall of Fame after that, okay? What he did, that Bears team, Rex Grossman, Jay Cutler, not much to watch or be excited about. I'm a Chicago girl, born, bred, raised. 14 career punt returns, most all time. Two kickoff return touchdowns in one game, most tied for most all time. And all those punt return yards, third all time. The Hall of Fame is supposed to be the best players from all the positions in the NFL. There are kickers in the NFL. Special teams is part of it. And I would, this is no shade to Cutler. Well, you know how I feel about Cutler on this show. No shade to him or Sexy Rexy, but you put him on another offense with another quarterback, maybe those receiving numbers, those rec the whole receiving situation is a little bit different from Mr. Hester. I want to talk to him about that. I want to talk to him about Tyree Kill, his son, things he does in the community, what he thinks about this year's Chicago Bears, all of that and more, and hopefully we get him after this. If not, you're gonna see a nice little tap dance by Kay Adams. You better get up out my way, catch a fade, catch a fade. He's gonna take it all away! Devin Hester has done it again for Chicago! And he is unbelievable! Every time we watch him, he's scoring. Where do you kick it? Here he goes! It's Hester! Hester's gonna take it! <laughs> My favorite is when he's looking at the scoreboard. There's so many plays where he turns around and starts waving. He had it all going on. He revolutionized the game, a game changer, and gave me a, a young gal from the northwest side of Chicago whose parents were immigrants from Poland and didn't even know anything about American football. He gave me something to get on my couch and jump up and down about every Sunday afternoon. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to welcome our next guest, 11-year NFL veteran, four Pro Bowls, three All-Pros, future Hall of Famer, the greatest punt and kick returner in the history of the NFL and an absolute legend. Hi, Devin Hester. How you doing? Pretty good. I hope all is well good. with you guys. Yes, I'm so great. I'm so uh, glad to talk to you. I know you're in your car. Thank you for trying to make all of this happen. I love seeing your highlights, and we're going to dig into some of those in a bit. We'll talk some bears. But first, um, you know, the, we're going to talk about the Hall of Fame situation. That's fine. But somebody who's going to get into the Hall of Fame is your son, okay? Your son, Drayton, a.k.a. <laughs> Ankle Bully, he will be in Canton with some of these highlights. Look at these. Take me through some of these. Oh, okay, that was the game last week he played against a um, uh, uh, part one of the team called uh, Mapaka. And um, that was a game last week, pretty much like the first game of the season for those guys uh, coming out for our league, which is Florida League. Well, amazing. He is so incredible. I saw Roddy White was commenting. There, there were like a thousand likes or more than that even on this video. He is crushing it out there like father, like son, of course. And I want to talk about some of um, some issues, but I can't, you know, the pain it causes me as a Chicago girl t that you're not in the Hall of Fame. We can't move past it. I can't move past it. What are your thoughts today yeah. on that? Uh... You know, I talked to a lot of veteran guys, uh, a lot of guys that's in the Hall of Fame, and um, they're like, you know, keep your head up, don't be, don't get so frustrated, um, because it, the minute you get that call, it's gonna feel like it was a first ballot, man. You're just gonna be so relieved, man. You know, we all know that it's it's bound to happen. You know, it's just a matter of time with me, and um, you know, I just gotta stay positive, don't think negative about the situation. Um, it's out of my control, to be honest with you. Um, but at the end of the day, we all know as football analysts and as great players that I should be in by now, but the time will come. 
And you will get in. Is there a reason that you've thought of, you know, we can look at your resume here. Is there something that, like, if you were to answer the question, why aren't you in? Like, why aren't you in these two years? What's the reason? I think it's uh, from, from just talking to the high guys above um, that know more than anybody about the Hall of Fame situation. It's, 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 mm -hmm. For me, they was pretty much saying this is a hard, the hardest thing for those guys to evaluate. Um, first off, just special team wise, is is what's hindering the situation. Um, they just don't know how to quote unquote um, figure out how special team will play a part in the Hall of Fame. Um, I do know that uh, when they do pick five guys each year, the last two years I was the sixth guy to get cut, so I was the last of the hmm. crop two years in a okay. row um, to get cut. And it's just, it's one of them, them, them unique situations where I'm listed as a special team guy and a returner. So it's so hard right now for those guys to figure this out or how to get a special team guy now. But they know that um, sooner or later I will be in. Wow. See, I hear that. And just as a fan of yours, I'm thinking, okay, well, kickers are in there. Ray Guy is in there. Why not a return right. specialist? You're being docked because you changed the game and there was nobody like you before you or after you. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. You know, and I, I did get frustrated the first year. The second year, you know, it was I was kind of used to the situation and the situation that I was in. And uh, it didn't hurt as bad the second year. But first year, I did cry. I'm going to be honest with you. I was very upset because um, mm. as a player, you know what I mean? Not just looking at special team wise, but what I did to the game and how I changed the game. You know what I mean? From the aspect of uh, special team wise. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to be a first ballot. That's something that I really wanted. You know what I mean? As my career got going and I started doing some things that never was done before. I looked at it as, you know, hopefully I can be a first ballot. And that's what I, I worked so hard for for as a as a player. Um, my rookie, second year, third year, on up to my last year in the league, I really, really wanted to be a first ballot. And um, unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. But at the end of the day, you know, all things worked out for the good. And hopefully I'll be in soon. Oh, my gosh. I, you cried after you didn't make it the first year, and now you're just sort of settled yeah. and you're thinking positive. I am in the church of Devin Hester this morning. That is an incredible way to carry yourself, an incredible, honestly, an outlook on life. I was thinking this morning about this with how explosive, how dynamic you were out there on the field. There's so much more creativity in the NFL right now offensively. What does Devin Hester look like in a Debo Samuel-esque role in today's NFL? <laughs> oh, that's I I people people that know me and the coaches that know me know that if I was in a system where I was playing with Patrick Mahomes or I was playing with the 49ers mm -hmm. right now with the offense scheme that those guys have that I will right I will be right there with those guys when it comes down to performance and and the way they play and the way they're uni utilized. I think I fit that type of skill. Um, I can always line up at running back. I played running back my whole high school, part one of years, you know, so that's not a question of me running the ball. Um, you can see a glimpse of that University of Miami where I did both ways on the ball, offense, receiver, throwing the ball, even running the ball, catching the ball. So in an offense like that, man, sky's the limit for me, man. That's why I always tell my friends that, you know what I mean, I feel like I unachieved. You know what I mean? My career in the NFL, because there's so much I could have did, but it wasn't shown. So you, the fact that you're saying you underachieved is crazy, but I look at a guy like Tyree Kill, a guy who looks up to you. Tyree Kill, you know, he was comparing himself to you back in 2016 before he even had a game, He before he even was out there for training camp, and then you see what he was able to do, you know, with that speed. But I heard you're, you're faster than Tyreek, huh? You would have beat Tyreek in a race? Uh -huh. Tyree, Tyree, I look at more. He 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 probably would have got me on the track. I think um when it comes to me, when me and him get compared, I think I can my change of direction is faster than his. I I would say his straight ahead line speed, he probably has me, but on the field change of direction, I think my moves and his moves, I, I don't lose speed. And sometimes he may lose lose a slow down a little bit, making a move, but I think that's where I get him when it comes to football. Uh, speed is I, I my change of direction was something that I worked on and I craft, you know what I mean, since I was young. So I was able to make moves and not lose speed 
And that's where I feel like I can get them at, on the field. Mm. Now, everybody talks about the iconic play by you. like that, you know, And you had a one, one really good receiving year, but I think, too, I think if it wasn't Rexman, or a Grossman, Rexman, Rex Grossman, if it wasn't Cutler, if it was a different world, a different system, that your numbers would have been bigger and you would have made more of an impact in the receiving game. I think that's so true. But you were iconic. In, I mean, you, you know this. It's nothing I'm new telling you. Everybody, always, of course, talks about what happened against Indy, the Super Bowl. It's never happened since. It never happened before. Do you have a favorite? favorite play though I'm sure you're sick of seeing that one what's your hall of fame worthy play like your favorite thing you ever did out there on the field um if I had to the, to, to to pick one of course it would be Andy but my I always say that my my favorite moment was when we played Arizona Arizona car and it's my rookie year oh yeah and I believe it was down we was down like 20 80 plus zip. there you go Talk yeah, we was this. down like 20. So this was a game where, you know what I mean, our defense was playing lights out um, the whole year. And um, pretty much our defense was carrying our team. Uh, well, it's a special team. I had a couple returns before this game. And uh, we just couldn't get nothing going on the offense. And Arizona jumped out on us like 20 sun zip in the hat. 20 sun, like 24, 2 or 24, 3 at halftime. Mm -hmm. And we found a way, defense found a way to come back. And they put up like, kind of put the game in reach and then for it to come down to the situation where um I had the opportunity to get my hands on the ball and take the point back to uh to put a give us the lead to win this game and I think that right there <laughs> really solidified uh the type of player I was. Yeah, there's year. that one there's your return there's your your return against the Giants was my favorite. I just yeah. love that. The Jay Feely <laughs> kick. You were, I was just like, oh my God, yeah. there's so many plays. I love your first touchdown, 2006, up against the Packers. I know them all. But now the yeah. NFL's different. It's changed a little bit. So, you know, not that there ever would be another you anyway, but the rule changes are making sure that there's no more Devin Hester out there. There's a new rule that you can signal for a fair catch anywhere inside the 25-yard line, and the ball will be placed at the 25-yard line. What's wrong with the current NFL? I mean, I I disagree with it because then now you take players like me out of the game. Um, does it benefit me in a selfish way? Yes, because then now you could possibly find the next Devin Hester that, that, that takes over the return game. Um, but mm -hmm. as, as a player myself, like, I don't want a kid that comes around with that, the type of talent that I have to be short of play, be an opportunity to play in the NFL because of they're taking the rules, they're taking the, the kicks and the punts out of the league. Mm. One last one for you quick. We're running up against the clock and we thank you, Devin Hester. I'm going to ask you these Chicago no bears, you got Justin Fields, you got DJ Moore. You are an absolute legend. The 2023 bears will dot, 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 finish the sentence make it to the playoffs what why how what <laughs> <laughs> they will i think they will make it to the playoffs okay I, I that's, that's all will, i needed I from you we'll make it to the playoffs. Devin Hester, if you were ever in L.A., I would love to meet you in person and go through all of your plays. It would take us 20 hours. A future Hall of Famer, an icon, a legend. We'll see you guys next week. Have a good weekend, Devin Hester. Thank you. 